Murder. Murder? I know, Kathy, as usual, it's a fair fight between two brave men. Isn't that right, gentlemen? Try, you yellow dog, or get... <laughs> Sheriff yet? My boys would be very anxious to meet him. I wonder how those killers of yours that acted just once they faced a decent, hard-shooting man who wasn't half paralyzed by their reputation. Is there such a man? Gunmen, gunmen.
Zeige zur Hand. Suicide, Tarka? This is a Tara Tarka. Men carry guns and they talk. Mr. Granger, do you know who I am? I hear you're a pretty fast guy. That's right. Prove it. Mister, are you actually looking for a fight with me? Look, but not finding one. <laughs> you found your fight, stranger. I never refused any man a fair fight. Fair fight? That's right. Okay. You insist upon a fair fight. Somebody help me get him upstairs. Always the Florence Nightingale, aren't you, Kathy? Here, somebody take his hat. Get up, you dirty yellow dog, and fight. Bart, come here. No man says what he said to me and lives. Think of my reputation. A reputation? 
If you submit his wingdom, your reputation as a gunman will be finished. What do you mean? You know who he is? No. Silver Dollar Kid. That's right. That's right. The Silver Dollar Kid, the yellowest man in the history of the Arizona Territory. The smallest gun in the West. I heard of him, but I never believed it. Well, who could believe those stories? A dude with glasses comes out from the east, puts on a pair of guns, and immediately challenges every famous gunman to draw. Then turns yellow at the last second. Why, well, he must have started a thousand fights and never pulled his gun once. Any gunman with any reputation at all who'd kill him would be laughed out of the country. A terrible thought. Imagine you spend your life building up a reputation, then suddenly you're known as the guy that killed the yellowest man in the West. You had a close shave, Bart. I need a drink. Come on, Walt. Walt, the man who killed him would be laughed out of the country. What are you talking about? Mayor, what's our problem? You know what our problem is. We need a sheriff. A man who can keep from getting killed long enough for folks back east to decide his law and order here. Why? Mayor, I think we've got our sheriff. I work in Nick Nolan's saloon downstairs. I brought you up here to my room. Huh? Must have been lonely for you waiting for a real man to show up. Well, he's here now. <laughs> I'll give you a little lady. I want to... Now, listen to me. I'm a dance hall girl. I drink with strange men. I smoke. But you get one thing straight. I'm not the kind of a woman you think I am. You're not? No. Nothing's gone right for me today. No, and you didn't do too well with Black Bart, either. Oh, you saw the fight? I was the woman you hid behind. Hid behind? <laughs> you saw, but you didn't understand, huh? You just didn't understand. Understand what? Well, at the last minute, I thought, somewhere, Black Bart has a sweet, white-haired old little mother. <laughs> so I let him live. So that's why you refused to fight. Fight? Or with my lightning draw, would have been cold-blooded murder. You're fast, huh? Fast? <laughs> Count to three. One, two, three. <laughs> Four, <laughs> five. Think he loves it. What he all right, all right. <laughs> Nothing's going right for me today. Now it works. <laughs> Silver dollar. Do you mind if I ask you a personal question? Fire ahead. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with me? Isn't it obvious? Here it is sundown and I haven't killed a man yet. Of course, I've been on a trail all day and I ain't seen anybody except that black bot. And he has to have a sweet, white-haired old little mother. You didn't answer my question. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with me? I'm yellow. What's wrong with me? I'm a coward. I'm yellow. <laughs> Fletcher Bissell the third of Boston. <laughs> and now you know. Bissell? Well, tell me you never heard of the Bissell family. The famous yellow-bellied Bissell. <laughs> 400 straight years of cowardice without a single break. That's why I came out west, to prove that at least one Bissell could be brave. You mean not one Bissell has ever been brave? And my father, Bull Bissell, he was a general in the Civil War. Bull Bissell, what did he do? What did he do? The only battle he was in, they named after him. Bull Run. <laughs> That's why it's been through the years to say the straight as coward. That's why I came out west. I'm their last pope. Oh, Silver Dollar, why don't you go back? No, no. I'm going to prove that one Bissell can be brave, courageous, heroic. Like being sheriff of Primrose? What? We want to make you sheriff. Are you crazy? Quiet. <laughs> A Bissell? Sheriff of the toughest town in the west? You'll be dead in 24 hours. Nonsense. 
cowards we may be, somehow we managed to live a long time. <laughs> How do you like that? A pistol. Sheriff of Primrose. Read that. The newspaper just came out. Take a look. The town's got a new sheriff. Oh, what do you know? Law and order comes to Primrose. <laughs> Now listen to this, boys. A new era of law and order in Primrose is assured with the naming of a new sheriff. Fletcher Pistol, the third. <laughs> All right, boys, drinks on the house. Here's to the late sheriff of Primrose, who was he again? Uh, Fletcher Pistol, the third. <laughs> now, Primrose has been a rough and a dangerous place to live in. Now, you men are entitled to protection, and I'm here to see that you get it. Oh, uh, yes. Now, men, there's going to be law and order in Primrose. Now, gentlemen, I've lined up a civic program for Primrose. Together, we can push this thing over the top. First thing, I want you to sign up to be Big Brothers. In my sheriff, Big Brother Club. Now, what does that mean? That means we take the boys and girls of Primrose on hikes. Pageants, picnics, it'll be good for the youngsters, and they are the future of Primrose. <laughs> Next thing on hand, I'm instigating a clean up Primrose campaign. Now, fess up, gentlemen. You've been messy about leaving your horses in the seat. I noticed these little things. Another important item. You're all to join the Sheriff's Arts and Crafts Club. I've arranged for a squaw from the Indian village right outside of town. She's coming in on Tuesday nights to teach us bead work. <laughs> be good for you, sharpshooters. Keep those pupils dilating. <laughs> Next, we have a very important item. Archery, with the main competition to be held on the 4th of July. The lucky winner to receive one of my silver dollars. Not bad, huh? One of the sheriff's silver dollars. <laughs> How's your mother? My mother? Oh, she'll be proud of you, Bart, on Mother's Day when you bring her a pair of moccasins beaded by your old hands. I expect you there. Tuesday night, you ask for laughing water. Here's another item. Thursday night, behind the general store, we'll all gather for the Glee Club audition. And you, you're my first tenor. Tenor? Don't fight me on this. You're the tenor. Now, I'm going to need a bass voice. I'm hold all this is right here. You look like a robust type. Now, sing it nice and low and robust. Now, sing. Grimrose City's going to grow. Let's go. Grimrose. Come on, now. Don't be shy. Let's wake him up. Where is Don't hide on me. Now, sing it. Grimrose City's going to grow. Let's go. Excuse me. Pardon me, but there's a little ceremony that we have to perform, Sheriff Bissell. Sheriff Bissell, oh, you stop that. I'm Fletch. Just plain old Fletch. All right, uh, Fletch. It's, it's just a little ceremony that we perform for every new sheriff. Usually we wait two or three days. But in your case, we're going to make an exception. Oh, Shamo. Shamo, that means charming. <laughs> All right, Ike. It's your turn. Perform the ceremony. All right, Dalton. Catch, catch your tongue. Oh, don't be shy with me. Don't let this impress you. I'm just plain folks. I can't do it. It's your turn, you gotta do it. Look, Nolan, I got a reputation to protect. I killed 32 men, but I give every one of them a fair draw. He won't draw his guns, and you know it. Sure he will. He's all steamed up about being sheriff. Just provoke him. He'll draw. Go on. Hello, Sheriff. Sheriff, Sheriff! I'm just plain Fletch. You call me Fletch. I'm calling you a yellow dog, a dirty, crawling skunk. That's what I'm calling you. Now, see here, Dalton. I'm giving you 10 seconds to take that back, or you're going to suffer the consequences. I ain't taking none of it back. All right. You ask for this. You're out of the glee club. <laughs> no more time for him, you. I want to hear your voice later. Sheriff, you're a disgrace to Primrose. This man's insulted you. And I punished him. Punished him? <laughs> oh, yes. Wait till he finds out that the glee club goes on tour, singing in tombstones, Dodge City, and he has to stay home because he's been naughty, naughty, naughty. <laughs> Why don't you drop Mum to your line? I want to hear these voices, man. I want to hear you sing. He's got to be killed. Jake, take him. Ah, uh -uh. I got some pride. I ain't going to be remembered as the man who shot the Silver Dollar Kid. Primrose City's going to grow. Primrose City's going to grow. You see, Primrose, Primrose. That's right. Don't you listen to me. Primrose City is gone. Give me the walking back. Primrose, this is bad for your voice. Oh, now, Primrose City, why don't you follow what I'm telling you? Why don't you? All right, Bart. Looks like you've got to do it again. Bart? I ain't seen Mumsy in 20 years. <laughs> All right, you prima donnas. If your past reputations mean more than your futures, I'll do it myself. 
himself. I don't care whether he draws or not, he's getting it. Turn no kidding, calling bro. Bizzle. Bizzle. <laughs> Fletch. Coming. <laughs> you make fools of us long enough, now I don't care whether you go for your guns or not, you're getting it. Draw. Stop. Now oh, you listen to me, I'm saying this once and once only. If that gun isn't down by the time I count three, yeah. you're out of the Big Brothers. Go get it, dog. I'm shooting. Don't talk when I'm trying to count. One. Well, stop looking at me like I was dirt. Two. Somebody's got to do it. Three. Where any old clothes were playing, run, sheep, run. <laughs> I didn't bother you, just send for Fletch. Please, don't cheer, you'll starve the horse. No idea. He's got to be killed. He's got to be killed. It's him or it's us. That's how the Silver Dollar Kid got to be Sheriff of Primrose. Well, the oil's changed, sir. Oh, uh, how much do I owe you? Let's see that. Check your spark plugs? No, no, thanks. Imagine, they couldn't get anybody to kill Sheriff Bissell. That's right, until they brought in Sam Bass. Sam Bass? You mean the most famous gunman of them all? Fighters must be pretty scarce around here. Price your off, isn't it? Hi, Sam. Hello, Hi, Sam. 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 You got the slickest guns in the West right here in town. You sent for me? Just who is this silver dollar kid? Oh, look, Sam. Well, just how fast is this guy? Sam, you got nothing to worry about. Just remember one thing. When he says draw, don't wait. Fire. I haven't had a fight yet where I didn't give the man a chance to go for his gun. Oh, now, Sam, don't ask me why, but you can't wait for him to draw. Fire. Well, just how fast is this silver dollar kid? You're getting paid $10,000 to find out. Just don't wait for him to draw. Perhaps you'd like to join us. Oh, I do hope the registration isn't closed. We're lucky to have her. She's a wonderful teacher. There's such a shortage, you know. <laughs> Hello there, you're Sam Bass. Recognize you from your picture. But how I did is beyond me. I must apologize for the sloppy work our government printing press is doing. <laughs> do you see the pictures they send in on Billy the Kid? Horrible. <laughs> Are you the sheriff? No! <laughs> Never use that word, Sheriff. I'm just Fletch. Plain old Fletch. Fletch. Are you the Silver Dollar Kid? Oh, that. They used to call me that when I was in action. Well, you're in action now. Draw. Stop! Stop! Look at your hands. My hands? Sam, they're a dead giveaway. I refuse to shoot a man whose hands show me that all he wants is love and understanding. My hands? <laughs> Come on, stop kidding, Sam. I know, I know that you're an incipient psycho love depressive. But I give you my word, it will not leave this office. Manasset Kuzna. Right. <laughs> Sam, there's help on the way. Right now in Vienna, there's this 18-year-old boy, Sigmund Freud. He has the answer. Who? Sigmund Freud. He can help you, Sam. He don't even have to know you. All he'd have to do is look at your hands. And he would know that you're a victim of an over-emotional ego fighting an underdeveloped idiot. All this all came out in the debate 
that Boyd had with Spinoza last year in Budapest. Is that a night to remember? Will you ever forget that night? This young scientist, Sigmund Freud, came out with theories that startled the scientific world. Freud was so sure that he had the right path, and he tried to give these knowledges, fighting him all the way. What did Spinoza do? He yelled, fraud, Freud! In the on words, the inner complex, fraud, Freud! This is not startle Freud! He said, sir, have you ever had a complex of hatred in a dream bedlam? Did you ever wake up in the morning and say, what has confused me? What has confused you? Sex! Sex has confused you! And Spinoza, an old man at the time, said, well, perhaps when I was younger. No, Freud said, and then he came out with theories which would help you, Sam. You of all people, he would know that when you make this threatening gesture with your hands, which seems to say, kill, kill, you are only saying, love me, <laughs> love me. Sam, you're just a lonely, frightened little boy. These are not your guns, Sam. They're your teddy bears. <laughs> teddy bears. If you need help, come and see me. Are you crazy? Who is this guy? Our people call him Chogo Bu Umolko Og. Now, what does that mean? Man with voice of lion and heart of mouse. Oh, I heard that. Just for that, your tribe cannot have a float in the 4th of July parade. Hmm. <laughs> heart of mouse? Could it be your yellow? Oh, Sam, we're not discussing my problem. We're discussing your problem. Why don't you write Sigmund? The address is 12 Button, Fliegerplager, Strasse, Budapest. Send a self address. Shut up! <laughs> My reputation was too good for those guys. And they want to put an end to it. They want some shooting, they'll get some shooting. No, no, I forbid gunplay and primrose. <laughs> you and your big Indian mouth. <laughs> now look, Sam, you were going to make me a laughing stock, weren't you? Shut up! I absolutely forbid any gunplay. Draw. Drew. I dropped a dollar. <laughs> well, no one. I'm not in your league with a gun, Sam. Anyone thinks he is? Maybe. Welcome to Primrose. I guess it must be true what we heard about your new sheriff. He must be wonderful. He sure is a nice, quiet town. about gunplay in Primrose, but they won't listen. They just won't listen. Oh, be sure and wire the federal marshal about that $10,000 reward. We'll use the money for building the new clubhouse. My design. Stucco, red tile, Spanish. Oh, no, don't, don't fight me on this. We're going Spanish all the way. Hey! Well, what have we got here? Here I am, girls. This is what you came west for. Oh, yeah, Whistle. Hey, you're all right. These are young'uns? Yep. Good show. Adore me. <laughs>
engaged to be married? That's right. They just announced it. Well, boys, we've got him. Because there's not a man in the West, no matter how yellow he is, who won't stand up if the girl he loves is insulted. Now, Blake, this is your specialty. Gentlemen, you got a man here named Chicken Finsterwald? Walks like a duck. <laughs> Mister, as long as they pay their room rent, we don't care how they walk. <laughs> Where are the guests? They're just finishing dinner. They should be out any minute.
here's your weekly bill. Let's see that. Are you positive you haven't got a cheaper room? Cheaper? You're sleeping in the lobby now. I know, but see, I don't need all this space. Who are those fellas? I didn't ask them. Are they looking at me? Well, if they're looking for trouble, they're not going to get it. <laughs> Remember, if they start anything, I'll faint. See, and you take me up to my room. You're in your room. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, well, anyway, this doctor says to me, he says, now look, he says, with your heart condition... Excuse me, have you got a room? Is, oops. <laughs> oh, I, oh, I, I'm terribly sorry. It was, it was my fault. <laughs> Excuse me, sir, I didn't mean to jostle you. It really was an accident. Please don't hit me. Now, really, Barclay, you're such a clumsy oaf. Please don't be hard on it, sir. Shame on you, Barclay. <laughs> well, please accept my apology, sir. All right, but don't let it happen again. You got off lucky this time. game of poker. Oh, good. He likes us. Yes. Uh, what shall we play, sir? Five-card draw, usual rules. Jacks are better to open. Now I gotta win. Any objections? <laughs> no, sir. No, no. All right. Handy a dollar. I'm in. I'm in. I'm light. <laughs> what are you fellas doing up around here, anyway? Well, we're uh, mining students. Mining students? <laughs> yes. We were working a mine that petered out down in Tombstone. Hey, speaking of Tombstone, you fellas ever run into a Mrs. Hotchkiss? Hotchkiss? Yeah, about 84 years old. Stands about this high. Snow white hair, wears glasses, walks with a cane. Real mean. <laughs> yeah, those old ones could be real hungry. And fast, too. <laughs> Takes a pretty good man to bring him down. Mrs. Hotchkiss. Where? <laughs> just like her to put a rubber tip on the end of her cane, so I wouldn't hear her tapping up on it. <laughs> what about this, Mrs. Hodgkins? Ain't she that old woman who was shot in the back? Yeah, she was dry gulched in a dark alley. Where is she now? Well, in jail. Well, in jail, huh? <laughs> yeah, they found out she was the brains of a, of a stagecoach robbing gang. It was a thousand dollars reward for the guy who got her. A thousand dollars? Yep. Yeah, they found the man who claimed he gunned her down and uh, gave him the thousand. But that's my money. <laughs> Your money? Boys, I'm the man who shot Mrs. Hodgkins. <laughs> I'm Chicken Finster One. Uh, now, mister, you, uh, you sure you're not just a bragging? I told you I shot her. Everybody in Tombstone knew it had to be me. I sneaked up behind her in a dark alley, see? I kicked the cane from out under her. And I winged her she was going down. <laughs> That's my trademark. How do you like that? And this other guy got the credit for it. And my thousand dollars. Who is he? Fletcher Bissell the third. Fletcher Bissell the third? He's from our hometown, Primrose, Arizona. Be fast with a gun? Oh, I hate to say this, sir, but he's probably the yellowest man in the West. <laughs> Any dark alleys in Primrose? Plenty of them. Saddle my horse. We're riding for Primrose. Shot this little old lady in the 
back? Yes, Sheriff. Oh, I know we've had our differences, Fletch, but when I heard what had happened to poor Mrs. Hotchkiss here, I brought her all the way down from Tombstone to see justice done. Because that's the kind of a sheriff I think this town has now. Yeah. Now, folks, now listen to this. I'm taking a vow. I'm gonna hunt that bomb and chicken since the wall down. And when I do, I'll shoot him down like a dog, wherever he's hiding. I can take care of him myself. Now, oh, there, there, Mother. That's my job. And I promise you, when I hunt him down, and I find him, my two friends here will speak. Sure, you don't have to hunt him down. He's right here in Primrose. Here in Primrose? He's in my saloon right now. I'll see he doesn't get away. Go get him, Sheriff. Come with me. Well, I'm very busy. I got these posters to get out. <laughs> He took my thousand dollars, eh? No man lives that does that. I can't wait till it gets dark. You won't have to wait. You're gonna be fighting in just a few minutes. In broad daylight? And face to face. Face to face? What are you talking about? That ain't my style. I'm a Batman. I here he comes. When I got here. The sheriff's on the way. What's all this face-to-face -face nonsense? Well, that's the way it's got to be. You shoot him in the back and it's murder. They'll form vigilante groups. We'll be all finished here. Here he comes. Yeah. 
All because two men faced each other and found friendship. Yeah. Fletch, why don't you check? I gotta get something off my chest. Go ahead. I didn't like you at first. You didn't? No. The reason I didn't draw is because I'm yellow. I got something to tell you. What is it, Fletch? I didn't like you at first either. You didn't? The only reason I didn't draw on you is because I'm yellower than you are. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. There ain't nobody yellower than me. I come from the yellowest family that ever lived. Oh, you don't know what you say. You must have heard of the Bissell family. The yellow-bellied Bissell. Yeah. Amongst us spinster walls, your family was known as the line hearted. Now, see here, chicken. I've taken all I'm going to take from you. I'm not going to stand here and have you insinuate my family weren't yellow. That's all we got left. <laughs> Anytime you say that the Bissells are yellower than the Finster Walls, you're a liar. Now, I never drew my gun in anger before, but I'm warning you. I'm going to be in the middle of Main Street at high noon in my shooting clothes. <laughs> now, you come ready to apologize, or you'll be ready to draw. You got yourself a fight. <laughs> Fletcher have been the peace officers here in Primrose. Here's your bill. Seventy-two dollars? That's right. So that was the gimmick. You kept us here all day with that cock and bull story just so you could run up a bill. Oh, now look here. That was the truth. Truth? There never was anybody ever lived as yellow as you say the silver dollar kid was. I'm not paying. Now listen, you. You're paying every cent of that bill or that car ain't moving. Oh, it ain't, huh? Well, we'll see about that. 